Now we are here again. By God's grace, I want us uh, just to share something uh, this morning just to enable us to position ourselves right even as we desire to receive from God. Hallelujah. Now we understand uh, that for us to receive from God, there are certain conditions. There are certain conditions. There are conditions always attached to any promise of God. Because the Bible says, if you do this, then God will say, I will do this. There are always conditions. The conditions must always be right for God to move. Of course, God can move the way he wants. But there's a way God also has positioned himself, or the word of God says about God himself, that now God, it necessitates God for people to accommodate. They find themselves that the word of God has to be accommodated in their hearts. So when the word of God is accommodated in your heart, God is able to work in your heart comfortably. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is able to, to do it comfortably. Because the more you obey God, the more you see the result or the more you see the move of his, of his hand in your life. Because Christianity is not a set of rules. Christianity is a relationship. That's why we teach here. We believe it so. And that's what we read in the scriptures. Because here we follow the scripture. What the Bible says is what we do. Outside it, we don't know anything else. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the word of God is the standard. Is the standard. And when I say the standard, you see uh, the standard of measure, like kilograms, like we have centimeters, meters, feet, and all those things. It means like when we have a standard, regardless of the situation, the standard does not change. Praise God. Like for example, I'm standing here, people are saying I'm very tall, but the moment I step down there, I have reduced the size because now I'm closer to you. That is not a standard. Man is never a measure of standard because man will change based on what favors him. Man will change based on what is favor, favors him. If someone's child did something wrong, someone else will want that child to be punished. But when it is turned vice versa, they are their children. They say, have mercy on this child. So the standard of men changes based on circumstances. But the standard of God what does not change. Whether you are sick, the Bible still speaks about the same thing about God's word. That I am the Lord that he left thee. Hallelujah. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Praise God. The Bible does not change regardless. Whether you are poor, the Bible says, let the poor say what? They are rich. Hallelujah. Let the blind say they can see. So the Bible has a way of speaking. And this is not the language of men. It is the language of God. And God wants his people to adapt his word. When you adapt the word of God as your language, and that is the, word, the one thing God will always hear. Praise God. Where you find yourself in trouble, you don't complain about much of the trouble, much of the suffering. You tell God how much you have suffered. God will be looking how you have obeyed his word for him to move. Are you faithful even in your trouble? Praise God. Someone will be saying they're trusting God for uh, maybe a spouse, but now they are attached to someone else. They say until God blesses them, that's the moment they detach themselves. God will wait for you until you change. And in terms of God waiting and man waiting, man is getting old, but the Bible says about God, he remains the same. He has, his ears remain the same. Hallelujah. God has never been old, and he will never be old. We don't know how old God is. That is not our trouble. Our trouble is to, to look at what God is able to, uh, uh, to do in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I want us just to talk about something concerning obedience. Um, obedience. Because now, man after falling, because there are times you may preach to someone concerning the issue of sin, concerning the need for them to get born again. And someone may tell you that uh, I don't smoke. I don't beat my wife. I don't abuse people. Hallelujah. 
this, he say, I don't steal, I don't overcharge. If they, are, uh, they do business, they, don't, they say, I don't overcharge, I do this and this. And now you understand that that is just the righteousness of man. Because as far as God is concerned, as long as we are born out of Adam, we are automatically sinners. Hallelujah. We are automatically sinners. Because there are times people go to out to, to evangelize to people, and someone will say, I don't do this, I don't do this. In fact, they say, do you see, I have even escorted my wife to church. I have given her money to give to church. For me, I just go home, I read the newspaper. If there's anything I drink, is water. Hallelujah. Jesus says, unless a man is born again, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That is the standard. Jesus says, you must. Hallelujah. He says, you must. You must be born again. Now, that is the nature that we find ourselves with, is the nature of rebellion. Rebellion. We have been born with a rebellious nature. And this rebellious nature needs now to change, to be transformed. Now that we begin to serve God in a new way, as the Bible says, not according to the latter, but in a new and living way, according to the Bible in that book of Hebrews. New and living way. Praise God. So it was necessary now God to promise that they, he will be able to do something about the human heart. Because the human heart is rebellious. God sees the children of Israel, however much God does the miracles, the signs and the wonders. They go through the Red Sea. God speaks to them. Everyone hears God. Here, no one has ever hears, heard God. We have never heard God speak to us directly, every one of us. But there was one time when God spoke to the children of Israel, thousands of them, and they had God, and they were very afraid. And they told Moses, uh, we understand that God has spoken to us, but if you continue speaking to us, we think we might die. Hallelujah. Because before God spoke, there were lightnings, thundering, smokes, things that they were not used to. Things that they were not used to. And when God revealed them himself to the children of Israel, they were freed. And uh, God was speaking to Moses now to the book of Deuteronomy. He said how God wished, how he wished that that kind of heart and fear will continue in them, that it may be well with them and their children's children. God does not desire to bless you alone. God desires when you're blessed, the blessing continue even to a thousand generations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, God desires for us to obey him. And obedience does not benefit God. When God tells us to obey him, God does not, God does not desire to infringe on our rights. Or to manipulate us. Or to violate our freedoms. I had one, one man of uh, one man, not one of God, but I don't know. Is one is is a man I love, uh, Kipchoge. He says that the obedient one, the obedient ones are the ones who are free. Hallelujah. The ones who obey are the ones who are free. Free in the sense that uh, they'll not be lured to the world. The same way God desires to obey him. Hallelujah. But obedience to God is not just a set of rules that you have read God says do this and you begin doing them. It begins by the aspect of love. Hallelujah. Love. Now at this point, I want us just to read a scripture in that book of Deuteronomy. Sorry, Exodus. Exodus 19, verse number 5. The Bible says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Hallelujah. He says that, Now therefore, let me just uh, read verse 4. The Bible says, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. 
Now therefore, if you'll indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. We understand the earth is the Lord. The Bible speaks about it. And the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Again, it says the earth, the heavens and the heavens itself belongs to God. The earth has it given to the sons of men. Hallelujah. Praise God. The earth belongs to, to God and the fullness thereof. Now, God was interested in these people. God was interested in one man called Abraham. Now he was interested in his son Isaac. He, now he was interested in his son Jacob. Now from Jacob we find the 12 tribes. Now God was interested in the entire, uh, in the entire tribe, the 12 tribes. Hallelujah. And God was overwatching over them and uh, he caused them to be in captivity for those years, for about 400 years, now the prophecy was that they, after 400 years, I was supposed to come out because where they were going, God had not dealt with the people in that land. So they were going because now God was angry with those people. So he tells them, they should not tell themselves that God has loved them because they were good people. There was nothing good that God saw them, saw in them. Hallelujah. It was because of the covenant. It was not because they were they were hard-working people. Of course, they were hard-working. We see how the Egyptian had uh, exercised dominion over them, but yet still, they were working as hard. But God tells them, as he's taking them, they should not tell themselves that they should never come to a place, they beat their chests to say that we have been good people. So God has rewarded our good deeds. Hallelujah. In fact, God says that how they have disturbed God since the day he began to take them out of Egypt. Hallelujah. They lived as rebellious men, as rebellious people. But constantly there was a man to plead for God's mercy concerning them, and that was Moses. And these people were spared. Because Moses used to remind God of his covenant. And God is not a covenant breaker. Hallelujah. God is not a covenant breaker. Now we say we begin by love. Now, if you really obey God, it means that you love Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you love me, you will obey. On the condition of love, obedience becomes not a burden, but a delight. Praise God. Obedience no longer becomes a burden, but a delight. Something you love doing. You don't love, you don't obey because there is judgment. In fact, the Bible says the love, God's love casts away fear. Only fear connects people to judgment, something that hap will happen if they go wrong. But where there's love, hallelujah, praise God, you'll find yourself doing what God loves or God, what God intends you to do. So when you love God, you begin to delight in him. Number two, you begin to spend more time with God. How do you spend more time with God? There are two areas. Reading the Bible and prayer. And these two things must always go hand in hand. They cannot be separated. Hallelujah. Because I've said there's a language of God. You may, you may pray you pray, you pray, and God hears any place you're mentioning his word. You see, Jesus says, until now, you have not asked. People were asking, but they were asking in the wrong way. They were using the wrong language. So until that time, God had not had faith out of people. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you must learn his word, and then you learn to speak to him. Praise God. Ask your neighbor, do you love the Lord? Hallelujah. Let them not answer. If you ask them to explain, you'll find a very different, confusing answer sometime. Praise God. Do you love the Lord? Hallelujah. When you love God, 
you obey. And obedience, you don't obey what you have not had. You don't obey what you don't know. Because anything God will ask of men is something these people are aware of. They know about it. Hallelujah. But they only bring other reasons as to why they are not supposed to do it. As to why they are not supposed to do it. Because anything that God will ask of man is within their reach. It's not something that is hard. When God was asking for Abraham, it was within his reach. But the argument will be presented. Hallelujah. The argument will be presented. There will be reasons. That's why Abraham, Abraham will say, I have waited for 25 years. Hallelujah. Number two, what will my wife say? <laughs> Praise God. The common sense. The common sense of man. Because what God asks of you is not within your reach, is not out of your reach, is always within your reach. But the problem is, what will people say? Hallelujah. What will people say? Again, what will happen if I do this and this? One man said, obey God and leave the consequences to him. Hallelujah. Obey God and leave the consequences. The consequences may be, you may obey God and you will be fired from your job. You may obey God, people will begin to reject you. You may obey God, and there are consequences, a lot of consequences that we cannot begin to touch or to mention one by one. Hallelujah. But the thing is, we go back to love. If you really love God, you won't care what people say. Because you know God, you know his voice. You understand his voice. The same way Jesus says, my sheep hears my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not hear him. The sheep of God hears God's voice. But many people have heard the voice of God. But what did they do with the voice of God until now? What have you done about it? Hallelujah. What have you done about the voice? And God will speak to you from the very point of obedience. If you didn't obey the last, why do you expect God to speak something else? Why do you want God to speak something else? He will speak to you from the last point of obedience. Hallelujah. And that's why in that book of Judges chapter 10, the children of Israel cry to God, they're in trouble. They cry to God. But as they cry to God, God has been delivering them. God has been delivering them through people. Now again, they're in trouble. They run to God. Now God now gets tired with them. He says, now run to the idols that you've been worshipping. You want the help of God? And then you also you want, the, you want the comfort of the world. You cannot have two things. The Bible says, you cannot worship two masters at the same time. You will hate one and will love the other. And the one you will love is the world, not God. Because if you are full of this world, you will love the things of this world. But if you love God, you love the things of God. Instruction, obeying, spending time with him. That's why we say when you love him, Obedience is no longer a burden, but a delight. Hallelujah. You begin to spend quality time. It's not about much of the prayer, but just being in the presence of God, because God wants you in his presence. As much as you want to pray to talk to God, God also wants to talk to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you love the Lord, obedience ceases to be, to be a burden. It becomes a light, uh, something that we delight. So we begin to seek 
the things that God desire, interest, God is interested. Because as we are much as we understand, the Bible says, delight also in the Lord and he will grant you your heart desires. Delight also yourself in the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. You begin now to know what God wants for you. You may be praying for a car, but God wants something better. Hallelujah. God wants something that is better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, obedience to God, when we begin to, to obey God, our love for him is deepened, is deepened. Hallelujah. Our love for God begins what? Begins to be deepened. And when our love for God begins to be deepened, what is happening? There is something that is happening to our hearts. Our hearts begin to be purified. Hallelujah. Our hearts begin to be purified. Because now, there was a man in the Bible, a man called Saul. This man is sent on an errand. So he sent on an errand. He was told to kill the Amalekites and everything, to kill the Agag, the king, and everything to destroy. But now, as he come out of that battle, he takes, he does not kill the king, and he takes the fat of rams and cows, and he comes with. And then when he's asked, in fact, when he meets this man of God, Samuel, he says, praise the Lord, I have done all that the Lord commanded me. Forgetting that this man is a prophet. And this man asked, what am I hearing? The blittering of goats and rams. And he says, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I came with a long so that I can sacrifice to God. You see, he was, not, he was not interested in the sacrifice. He was interested in keeping, as long as it was not discovered, he will keep it to himself. Praise God. He will have kept him to himself. Now, that was his, one of his last assignments. So when he does not fulfill, you see, this man was man-centered. He was not centered on God. He was centered on the people. There's a time now he wants someone to go with him so that the people may know that this man uh, has the support of a prophet. But this man does not want to go with him because God does not want to move because the prophet will always go with the voice of God. Where the voice of God is, the prophet will go. The, vo the prophet does not go with the multitude. He always go with the voice of God because it's only the voice of God that protects the prophet. Hallelujah. And the old prophet does not speak his mind. He speaks the mind of God. If the mind of God has not been spoken to him, the prophet is always silent. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we say there's something that changes. Now, there's something that never changed in the life of Saul. So Saul, the Bible says, God will have made his kingdom very sure because of that assignment. So it makes me understand Anything that God tells a man to do is not something to do with the temporaliness of this world, but has to do with the eternity of a man. God is not interested in your temporal stature. That's why your problems does not move God. Because problems are always temporal. Today you may eat, tomorrow you may be hungry. The following day you, may, you will eat. Hallelujah. That is a temporal situation, changing situation. Today you may be sick, tomorrow you are having perfect health. God is interested in the eternal purpose. Eternal purpose. Because for Saul, the kingdom will be made sure. Sometime you may ask yourself, now, what was the prophecy concerning David that the Messiah will come? That is now the consequences we are talking about. Obey God, let him take care of the consequence. Hallelujah. Praise God. Obey him. Obey him and obey him promptly. Obey him. So we say that as we, as we love the Lord, as we continue to obey him, our hearts are deepened. Our minds or our hearts become purified. Hallelujah. So what happens? We continue to experience the mighty change in our hearts. 
that we no longer have interest or we no longer become interested in the things of this world. But we begin to get interested in the things of God. Eternity. God's revelation. God's promises upon man. Praise God. Hallelujah. You need to obey God. You have no choice as long as you are his children. And as long as you want to make it to heaven, you have to obey God. And Jesus, time some time, he will say, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom of heaven. But those who do what? The will of my Father. And the will of God is for you to obey him. Hallelujah. The will of God is for you to obey him. Because when it's all said and done, we will stand before God in the white throne judgment, seat of judgment. Everyone will give their account on earth. If you'll give account best that I didn't want to obey you because I feared my family will reject me. Hallelujah. The time you have to lose them to gain them back, but in a new way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now that was concerning obeying God. Now I want to just talk about two things. Obeying human authority. Now in that book of Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6. So the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, the promise, that you may be well with you, and you may live long on earth. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Hallelujah. Obey your parents within the, the boundaries of what God permits or what God allows. There are people who do things and they say, my parents asked me to do this. But you ask them, are you a Christian? Hallelujah. There are several occasions in my life that I had to not obey, not disrespectfully, but in a respectful way, not to carry out the assignment that my parents wanted me to carry out because now it could have imprisoned me or even I could have found myself very dead. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because what they are asking you, you have to check within the scriptures. Is it according to the word of God or is against the word. You have to obey them. As long as it is right in the scriptures, you obey. But as long as it's not according to the scriptures, hallelujah, you have a way of not just doing it and God will preserve your life. There are people today who are in danger. There are people whose life is miserable because they were, allowed, they were asked to do certain things. Hallelujah. They were asked to do certain things. They were asked to do bad things. And now they are regretting. Their life is not moving straight because they obeyed them. Now they obeyed them. These people are not in Christ. They do not have the knowledge of God. So whatever they ask them now has imprisoned them. It is causing more trouble and is causing more situation that are not pleasant to them. Now they look back and they regret. I wish they say they will have done better. They will have taken another route. Hallelujah. Praise God. That is now concerning uh, human authority now and concerning parents. And they, in that Hebrews chapter 13 verse number 17 regarding spiritual authority thirteen seventeen. So the Bible says obey those who rule who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. 
Let them not do so. As, see, the Bible says, let them do so with the joy and not with the grief. For that will not be, for that will be unprofitable for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Within the human system, God so also has given instructions for obedience. As much as you're obeying God, you cannot disobey your parents and say you're obeying God. The, you're, the very nature of disobedience is still in you. Hallelujah. You cannot say you're obeying God and you're disobeying the spiritual institution that God has put in place. It will not be good for you. Hallelujah. For the Bible is clear that obey those who have rule over you and be submissive for they watch over your souls as those who must give an account, as though they are giving account. Hallelujah. Praise God. So obey. Tell your neighbor, obey. It is for your benefit. It, for, it is for your good. If you don't obey, people also will disobey you at some point in time. The Bible says God cannot be mocked. That which man plants, he shall reap. And we do not know if it will be 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is there to fertilize the situation. Because you need to be, uh, it will not be good for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then the Bible speaks about government and authority. We have to obey them within the limits, within the limits of the scriptures. Uh, Peter, one time, he was told to stop preaching the gospel, but he says, we rather obey God than man. Hallelujah. Because he knew that the one he will need to really face and be very scared is God. Because Jesus says, do not fear them that have the ability to crush your flesh, but the one who has the ability over both your flesh and your soul, hallelujah, in judgment. Praise God. So if you fear man, the same man that you stand in judgment with, hallelujah. Monadamu kama wewe mtasimama siku ya ukumu kila moja wawa. Hakuna mtu alisema kwamba, no one will say that since they were in leadership, now they'll be able to escape judgment. Hallelujah. Fear of man should never be there. Honor men. There should not be fear. Hallelujah. Praise God. There should not be fear for you to do contrary to the word of God. Because you need God now, you need God tomorrow. You disobey him and you need him tomorrow, you'll be in trouble. God does not respond to emergencies. That's why we say Christianity is a relationship. Something that is built over time. Because also God will need to test you. And as he tests you, his confidence in you grows as he releases more and more blessings. The more you become faithful in obeying, the more he releases his love, his goodness towards your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is good. Greet your neighbor for me. How you greet them? Emmanuel, can I share my notes from the message? You want to copy them? You want to copy? The way I listen is uh, different from the way many people listen. I listen with my ears open to the word of God that I already know. And I listen with my ears open also balancing with the scripture. Can I share one, two, three, four, five? Today I have five points that I've gotten. God is good. Some of them, you know, they are things that you already know. It's only when somebody mentions them in a certain way, it hits your heart and it blesses you in Jesus' name. Point number one that I, that I was reminded or that was shaken in my head it is not how much we cry to God that will cause God to hearken to our prayer, but our prior obedience. Okay? You see, I'm crying to God now. Cindy, it is not how much I cry now, but my obedience yesterday. Because when I get to this place of crying, I do I have favor in the presence of God. 
Or is God already mad at me? <laughs> God is good. Because, of course, you know, when we stand, there is the sinner, there is the man who is uh, walking with God. When we stand, when Job stood to pray, it, he was different from any man because he was favored in heaven. Sindio, then I put three dots. Then I say, today's obedience is making tomorrow's prayer difficult. Hallelujah. So the first point he gave it at the beginning, then the second one he gave it up on Musha, but I was able to connect it. But I know I can, I hear very well. I can even, he can even copy my notes after preaching it. God is good. Today's disobedience is making tomorrow's prayer difficult. When temptation to sin comes, remember tomorrow you will need God. And this temptation to sin, if I fall to it, it will give me trouble tomorrow. Amen? Because it is, not the, it is not just a matter of prayer. But who are you that is praying? We say, God have mercy. Who are you that is crying for mercy? Are you Goliath or are you David? Amen? Are you Goliath or are you David? Amen? Are you King Saul or are you David? Who is this man crying for mercy? It is important. Say my Amen? A point number two that, that spurred a, a wonderful song. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega. Man of God says, God is not a covenant breaker. God is not a covenant. And you know, my mind went through the scripture. Who did ever God promise and God not keep? Hallelujah. But know this, for it to be called a covenant, there are conditions on both sides. Any covenant that was ever broken, it was broken by man. Amen? God never broke a covenant. That is understood. Sindio? Hallelujah? When you love God, Point, another point that I got. When you love God, obedience ceases to be a burden. It becomes a delight. Hallelujah. When you love God, but you know this also happens to man. Do you offend somebody you love? Hallelujah. And you see, if you truly love man, naturally you will not want to displease them. Kama unampenda mwanadamu kweli, naturally hautapenda kumkosea. So you see how easily we disobey the commands of God portrays the love of him that is in our heart. Oh, kidogo umefanya, oh, natubu. Kidogo umefanya, natubu. You do this, I repent. You do this. Some people you not know, do it because there's the provision of repentance. It's, we call you a, a, a willing sinner, a willful sinner. Hallelujah. If I truly love God, obedience becomes a delight. It is not a burden because I'm pleasing my master. I'm pleasing the one who has sustained my life. I am pleasing the one who created me fearfully and wonderfully. I am pleasing the one who gave me this commission to serve him. Oh, what a privilege to have the best boss possible in the whole world. I love you, Lord. He's just a good God. Amen? God is good. So if you find yourself too easily backsliding, too easily finding yourself offending God, ha, ask God to help you to love him. Because your love is what is questionable. When we got born, when we were, before I got born again, because I, I was in the world well, well. Hallelujah. I used to ask myself now, now the way I love rumba music, Hallelujah. There are things that I love, that I, I used to ask myself, now if I get born again, where will I do this thing? But now when I got born again, and the love of God started to enter my life, I found myself hating what is opposite to God. Because I love the presence of God so much. I listened to Rumba, the world in Rumba, no way, no way. 
If that radio has only rumor of the world, I'd rather break it or throw it away. But I'd want the, I value the presence of God more than anything. Say my amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. <laughs> then man of God said this one. I don't know if you heard this one. Alisema kama mekimbia poop ni kafira tatairudia hapo tena. I was writing. <laughs> the assignment that made Saul lose his kingdom is the same assignment. Okay, he said it partially, then I completed it. The same assignment that made Saul lose his kingdom is the same assignment that could have secured it had he handled it differently. Go and destroy the Amalekites. Had he obeyed that, his kingdom would have been secure. Ile ile ilimuangusha ilimsambaratisha. Oh my God. We should obey because we do not know what carries the rest of our lives. I told you, November 22nd, God to speak that the grace for no, is not 22nd. It is a, is it nine? I remember the day of Rose Muhando. Hallelujah, the day before. The day God spoke that healing has fully come. And last two weeks ago, we had the healing of cancer from that weekend. The day the Lord spoke, those who are here remember my test? My sons have killed my goat. And my reaction there, I said, the devil, I see you. This is an issue of God. Simple offense. And God said, ah, the way you've handled that one, now you enter another place of healing. Imagine not 40 days fasting. Not, <laughs> not 40 days fasting. Not 21 or 28. Hallelujah. Just how I handle the situation in terms, I've been taught about offense, I've been taught about self-control, yeah, that is it, self-control. A test of self-control is the one that God says, ah, good. God is good. You know, you have that good, and you're planning for it very, very well. They have tied two goats on one rod. The goats have gone round and round and round. Hallelujah. One is already like this, the other one is almost also following. Amen? Imagine that, that test of self-control. And the Lord says you are entered in the, into full the grace for healing. Amen. You don't know what is carrying the rest of your life. Be careful in everything. You don't know. It could be something you'll tell your wife, oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Mistakes are common. M mistakes, that, that is a, just an error. It's not your character. It could be that, and you hear the voice of God. Say my amen. It could be that time that you've come to church, hallelujah, and what you have in your pocket, what you have received 100 that day, and you say, let me rush to church. And normally you would just look down, and because that is small money, but you say, God, you have given me a hundred. My tithe is ten. I'm going to pay that tithe of ten. And that is the day your finances open. But before, you may find yourself you have even given a hundred thousand. But God will test you when everything looks contrary, but you decide to be obedient. Ah, You may find that that is what is opening your door. Who say that out? Don't think that God is... A... You remember Naaman? He sold go and wash. Hallelujah. Go and wash seven times. You say, ah, the rivers of my place are cleaner. I could have bathed in them. Amen. He was told uh, something that was so simple, but it was because he was known a man of his class. Humility would be the test. He was given a small task. And the Bible says that when he came out, his skin was like a baby. God is good. Hallelujah. At times, it is not great things that carry our blessing, but small things that you just take care of being obedient. Say my amen. 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 Obey God, the last point, and let him take care of the consequences. Obey God and let him take care. Obey God and let him take care of the consequence. Obey God. Ha! Let him take care of the consequence. I am Joseph. I'm not sleeping with you, Potiphar's wife. Okay, you're going to prison. 
God is able to bring my destiny connector in prison. <laughs> Say my amen. amen. And did God do it or not? He did it. Hallelujah. Oh, king, let the lion eat me. <laughs> I'm not worshipping you. After a few days, the God of Daniel was declared the God of the land. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We want you to know, oh, king, that in this matter, ah, don't worry. <laughs> we are not going down. Our God is, not a, is able to save us. Even, though, even if he does not save us, we are still not going down. God is good. That is the day it was discovered that God can cause you not to be touched even by fire. Obey God. Let him take care of the consequence. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Say my amen. amen. Drop your nets. From today you will become fishers of men. Who has ever had anybody fishing men? How do you fish men? How will we feed our families? Hallelujah. The Bible says they dropped their nets and they followed him. Blessed be the name of the Father. Hallelujah. By the time three years is finished and the master is going away, remember people used to sell and bring things there. Say my amen. People used to sell their products and bring them at the feet of the apostles. They are the ones to determine what would happen with the provision. Say my amen. amen. Is God good? Yes. Is God able? Yes. Is God mighty? Yes. Is God faithful? Yes. That simple word. Whatever, simple. That is what we believe. And now for us, we don't only hear it, but we do it. You know, the blessings of God are not to the hearer, but the doer. I believe in obedience. I don't care who is looking at me. I know that two important characters in destiny are looking at me. The Lord is looking at me. The devil is looking at me. People forget that the devil is watching. And you know, he is the one who uses disobedience badly because he uses it to accuse you and to destroy your life. Two people in destiny, always watching you. The tempter, the blesser. The tempter and the blesser, they're always watching you. Amen? And I tell people this. The blesser, who is Jehovah God of Israel, he does not watch you to destroy you. He does not watch you to finish you. He does not watch you to punish you. Rather, he actually is watching over you to bless you. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth seeking to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. He is looking for commitment and love to bless you. But, unfortunately, when he looks at us, he finds not what is his, but what belongs to Satan. And so instead of blessing, curses come upon us. Amen? And what I tell people is this, there is a day to start. There is a day I got born again. And I was walking very vigorously. Then there is a day my eyes opened and I discovered that people were committing sin, but they were not dying. Now me too also I began to become cold. Then as I read the Bible, I read the promises of God so much. And as I looked in the world, I discovered that these promises are not there. I read the scripture that the every healing Every sickness should be healed. Then I ask myself, why is it that as long as we've been alive, they say AIDS started in 1982 properly. AIDS has been killing people. I say, why is it that cancer is killing people? Then I come to, 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 to the realization that, that it is probably because those who are supposed to be the contact point for healing are not working right with God. So you see, I tell you, that is the stages of my life. Nikaokoka. You know when you got born again, especially those who got born again in high school, very on fire. You are very serious, very committed. But then what spoils people, even here I know they are there, that you come to discover some pastors are doing these things and they're not dying. Uh, so you try, then you commit a sin there and you, you wait for the car to hit you, the car is not hitting you. Lightning to strike you, lightning is not strike, striking you. Then people become cold. But I also went through that stage where I became careless. That is the initial stage 
of me in ministry life. Actually, after receiving the vision of God would want to, what God would want to do, there's a season there early, 2010, 11 there, I became a bit careless. But then I, I came a bit careless and almost followed the system of the pastors in Kenya. God is good. Hallelujah. I remember there, when we were there in the, in, at Voi, one pastor came and uh, we were ending the year and the man of God said that we are sowing a seed, 2009, for that next year. Ah, when it came to 2010, I knew that was the system. But God had not told me that. I was learning it from the Kenyan pastors. And I was also wearing soon and suit and that was God to be seen. I am a cosa kuva suit, there's no problem, okay? But if the suit is the only thing that is there, then you are lost. Because even Freemason wear suit. Sindio, wear the suit but have something more. Amen? The suit should not be the only thing that you have. So I followed the system, on, but then I came to ask myself these questions, especially when somebody would be brought for prayer and they don't receive their healing. I asked myself, what is this? Then I came to, well, as I studied my Bible, I came to discover that, ah, God will not change because of the condition of man. God will not change because of sickness of man. God will not be moved by the problems of man, rather by his obedience. And that is the time I started to walk the journey of obedience. For seven years, 2010 to, hallelujah, from 2010 to 2017, hallelujah, I was praying and really traveling in prayer. 2017, the Lord brings the revelation of altars. The Lord brings the revelation of altars. You know the three ways the devil attracts the devil attacks men. Number one is covenant. Number two is ignorance. Number three is disobedience. Okay? Altars is what I've done before or what my people have done before. Disobedience and ignorance, they are affecting tomorrow. But covenants are affecting yesterday, they're affecting today. Amen? So God brought, that is already a big, big revelation. God brought the revelation of covenants. Deal with where you're coming from. Say my amen. Those were the stages of growth. But by that time, I have determined, though I may find myself in sin, though I may find myself in error, because nobody is perfect, and we are all sinners, though I find myself, I was aware that it was this thing that I've done, this thing could cause havoc. I would go into deep repentance, wakati wa water nateleza, any time that I slide. I would get into deep repentance because I was now conscious you see, consciousness is very important. When you are conscious that whatever you do will bless you, whatever you do can curse you, it is very, very important in your journey, your work with the Lord. So those are the stages of my life. From 17, 2017, dealing with the altars properly. 2018, 2019, when it comes to 2020, because before I'm doing charity, 2020, the, 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 the realization, okay, the embracing of... of this word from T.B. Joshua comes in. That any time you help somebody in need, your position in Christ Jesus is enhanced. That is, those were his words. But the Bible says, give and you will receive. See, in Asama Ivo. Hallelujah. Give and you will. Hallelujah. It's, what is the correct word? Hallelujah. Press down, shaken together running over will be placed on your lap. So that is just the same thing. So if I give, I expect more. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I learned to embrace this thing. And that is 2020, that is where I, I made the decision that I will not just give for the sake of giving. Because that time I'd give 500, give 1,000, 2,000, and sana. That is the time I developed it in my heart that when I bless somebody, they will feel blessed. And I started giving and I got 5,000 shillings, Mbele na Nyuma, and I gave it as charity. By that time, 5,000, just four years ago, uh, 5,000 bought one, uh, 25 kg of rice, 10 liters of oil, and one bale of, of uh, cooking flour, of maize flour. Hallelujah. So that is the time I gave it, and I told God, God, if you give me again, if you give me 10,000, I'll give it to two people. That happened the next week. Then I told God to make it a standard weekly, I will give it to three people, 15,000. And that is when now, amen, God called me to the mountain for prayer. 
in my sleep, I saw three mountains, three hills, and I fasted and prayed. And coming out of that, God gave me an instruction. Post about my servant TB Joshua until the day you will now start to post about yourself. He, before that, I would post. And whatever I post, nikipata like nane, ah, yeah, 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 na lala kama nimeshika simu. I find five comments. Ah. But now, that day, the first time I say, what is this thing? How can I post about TB Joshua now? How can I post about this man? But you know what God was doing? I was not, I was not, I was not posting praising TB Joshua, but I was posting what I had learned from TB Joshua. So for about a year, it was like revision of what I have learned over 10 years. So I remember the first post that I posted. And that is the greatest lesson that I got from TB Joshua. Less of man and more of God. And you can be greater than any man on earth. Nikapata 1,400 likes. And that 1,400 was like two hours. They take water. Say me, hey, God must be in this thing. Hallelujah. There's a day I posted so many that Facebook blocked me for a while. You are blocked from using this feature. <laughs> but you see, I wa- it was my revision. But then suddenly, people started to take note of me. Say my amen. We bless the Lord. You sorry, nirefu sana, ndakuja kuitwa siku ingine vizuri. Hallelujah. Then we go into a season of testing. People are knowing me that time, you know, then COVID came. COVID came and Nonajua, <laughs> COVID came and initially at COVID, we didn't have even bank account. We no savings. So COVID, you know, it was declared on Sunday. The COVID came. And by the day, offering had been used in church. So I go home, the beginning of COVID, not chilling. <laughs> The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That was a season of lack. You know, it, is, it happens. This thing that we say that before breakthrough, there will be darkness. We, we cooked with firewood in Nairobi. We cooked with firewood. And I thank God there are people here who will give that story. Elvis is still here. Freddy is the one who used to... Freddy, where is Freddy? Echo. Muthuri is here. God is good. The one who is uh, there with the sound is a cameraman here. You know, he was very tall, very thin, with big feet. Nowadays, the body has balanced because money has come. Iyo jamaa ilipika ugali kama mvoi na nyesha inje. The guy cooked ugali or with firewood and rain was falling. And you know, it is falling and the, the flood is coming like this. That guy defended fire and cooked ugali. I will never forget that man for the rest of my life. <laughs> I will never forget that man. And he got out ugali that, you know, you do like this and he does not stick even one. one <laughs> God is good. One day I boiled beans because the firewood was bad. The chi- we cooked and the children had to sleep. I continued boiling the beans until three. Even in 2010, see kitambo sasa. Wachana na ile muliona mapicha. Now this one is now the glory of God wants to come. Amen. That video I shared, I shared it recently. The food, eh, watch it. God can provide. One thing that God taught me during that time is that whatever comes, let me look for somebody else to give. And that would ensure that somehow we survived. Now, immediately that church was allowed to go back. Okay, by the time we were still in COVID, that is when people started to discover me. By the time church is declared that we are coming back, the first day we were 64. The second day, we were like 108. Now, kutoka hapo, that is how the ministry began to grow. But Kutoka Hapo, I was coming there in church saying, praise the Lord. If people knew what was behind there. Then during that season, 2019 now to 2020, the trial, I became sick. My kidneys failed, both of them. So I had fire here and I had fire here. 
And uh, after I've been determined that my kidneys had failed, the only way to sustain myself was to drink 1.5 liters at a go three times a day. One, 1.5 liters at a go. Eh? Hallelujah. <laughs> 1.5 liters at a go. In the middle of that sickness, something happened. And I was arrested for one day. You know, like now, like this guy is my friend. And this guy wants a visa. And I introduce the two of you. Then it does not go well. Then it's me who was come for. <laughs> I was to Mudangari there. The whole, we, it, we, I go look for the, God provided for that money. And I refunded the person who had been, who had been, uh, who had lost their money from that deal. Hallelujah. I was taken there. You know the way they bring, uh, there's that, li that liter of water. I was there and now my body is drying. I drink it at seven, I was taken at six. At seven now, I will, at seven I'm supposed to, at seven I'm supposed to drink water sijakunywa. You may figure sanne, my body is failing now. Fire. Fire. My body is failing. And by that time my people came to look at me, to, to check on me. And they came with water one liter. The way I held that water like this and finished it, the police said, get this man a bond to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I do, the guy said, one police said, me, I don't drink water. One week can pass. I took that water and I put it down. And I asked for the bottle to be filled half for me to finish the dose. So we got that money by evening. I, was, I went home. I lost 30 kilos in three months. 30 kilos in three months. I was like, 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 that time I was serving God with all my heart. But God put it for the sake of the sick that are starting to get healed today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So today if you tell me you are sick, me I don't hide. I've been working with the Lord. I've been No, I've gone through it like Job went through it. Lost 30 kilos. Hallelujah. <laughs> From 99 kilos, hallelujah, to uh, around 67 kilos. Now I'm less. But now it's because of prayer. Now I've lost more, but it's because of prayer. But that, that time I lost it from 99. I was fat. By the time I went into the wilderness, the fat here was too much. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you climb stairs, the trouser becomes like this. <laughs> God is good. But now you see that one comes. Now here we cut it. That is the time we are cooking with firewood. It was at the same time. I told you, I, I once tried to put out a candle. <laughs> candle. And I became dizzy and had to sit down. Candle. Kuzima mshuma. Then after that now, that is just immediately after COVID, then, then people began to come. The demand became, came on the... In all of that, it was obedience. It was faithfulness. Will you fast? Will you pray? You know, I continued my fasting program until there came a time where now it was sickness, it was impossible. Because when I'm eating and I'm blowing the candle, uh, uh, <laughs> I want to fall down. I was thin. And you know, somehow, my people didn't notice. It is when I had gained my weight and I took a photo and compared it that my people realized what was happening. Because we were seeing each other every day, they didn't realize how much I was losing weight. But after that, the faithfulness of God. Kutoka hapo ni calendar, marking the calendar of the grace and the glory of God. And the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name. So, you soriote ni mekupatia. Okay? Don't church me with the club. The whole of that story, the most important point where I was in regard to this message today, the point where the realization comes that God is watching. That I don't need testimony of man. Because if it is impartation, if it is prayer, who in this world could lay hands greater than T.B. Joshua? Twice! 
who at that time when I say the line of miracles. But after all that, God was watching me, waiting for me. The most important point, the pali unafikanga unafanya mamuzi. I'm not born again, I need to get born again. Number two, I am born again. But what the picture of my life in heaven and some people on earth, because there are some people who it is in heaven but on earth they say it is well. God is good. There are people who wear long dress and decent top in church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, uh, but and, uh, in church we say, glory to God, sister, sister. Hallelujah. But then when we look at you on the internet, I look at your name and I say, ha, what has my daughter posted to the Niki Ingia hapo karibu ni angushe simu? Because of what, what you are dressing and what you are portraying. Hallelujah. Then there are those who are dressing very, very well. You are dressing very well, whether you're in church or whether you are outside there. But at the coming of darkness at night, it's only demons who can give you a testimony. <laughs> Say my amen. amen. Now can I tell you, that second one is the problem of many children of God. Why we don't see God. Our dressing approves us in public, approves us in church. But our secret conduct makes us questionable before God. Na mwanadamu, man has no heaven to take you or hell to take you. It is God. Man has no hell to take you. Man has no heaven to take you. So we get approval before men, but then before God, our approval is lacking. And that is the change, the changing part of my life. Today they see me. They will see healing of cancer. Some people will see moves of God that are uncommon. There are people who are afraid. There are people who have come to this church and they have seen me pray. And the way people manifest and people vomit and people susu and people do this and they run away. It did not happen in one day. But then... Everything that is happening, happened in the Bible. Even that deliverance. Doesn't the Bible say, believe me, is it John chapter 9 verse 6, that Jesus prayed for the man and he fell and he was breathing on, and formed in his mouth. But the ignorant don't know. When they look at this, they become, a, at me, I believe what is written and I'm pursuing what is written and I will get it in Jesus' name. Somebody will come in this church when we are still here. And they will not be allowed to get in because they will be dead. They will be in a vehicle, but they will resurrect there at the gate. Uh, uh, no, that is not speaking by faith. That is a prophetic message. Amen. That one God told me last night. They will not be allowed because they are dead. They will die on the way coming, but they will resurrect there at the gate. But it is not a one-day thing. Nabado. People have come, I was telling people have come to this church. Because you don't know the Bible and you are used to mediocrity. Me, I'm pursuing everything that is available in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's not a one-day journey. Donge. Ah, donge means we are finished. <laughs> I want to pray for some people today. The first people I'm praying for are the people who want to start the journey and number two, the people who want to make it right. You want to start the journey as in? You want to start the journey? You are not born again. Number two, you want to make it right. You have been born again and maybe for years. But the benefits of salvation are not being seen because God knows your secret place. And there are some of us, people think you are born again. But heaven and you, no, you are not born again. I want to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus and to start the journey afresh in Jesus' name. The first place to prosper is in our spiritual lives. The first place to start the journey is accept Jesus. He's the driver. You enter his bus by salvation. I want people who have never accepted Jesus. I want people who want to recommit to Jesus Christ. You backslid. Nobody may know but you know that you are at the risk of not making heaven. And you know, if you're not making heaven, ah, where are you getting blessing? If you're not ready for heaven, where is blessing coming from? 
If you are ready to die, then you are ready to live. You heard that? If you are ready to die, if you are ready that if Christ came now, you are going with him, then you are ready to live. If you are ready to die at any time, then you are prepared to live. Say my amen. amen. God is good. God is good. Please cut for me that story. Media people, cut for me that Karogano. I want to listen to it myself. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. So if you're here, you're not born again. Uko hapa, hauna wakika na usiana wako na kristo. Kama hakija leo utenda na yeye. Kama uko hapa na hauna wakika. Nikumanisha hata ni kuombe umbigani bado hauko tayari kuishi. If you're not sure Christ would go with you, then no matter what I pray for you, you are not prepared to live. Amen? Being prepared to live is being prepared to die. Being prepared that if Christ were to come, you would go with him. So if you're here in Hauja Okoka, I want you to be serious with your life and come here in Jesus' name. Nataka ukwe serious na masha. Usiangalia jirani, kama hauja okoka, ama kama uliokoka, uka backslide. Na kutaka hapa, kuwa serious na masha yako. Usiangalia jirani, come, come. Iyo kuwa serious na masha yako. Kuwa serious na masha yako. Njo hapa ju. Njo hapa ju. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hapo, sawa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, 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 Hallelujah. John, 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 if I am Upia, you are not serious now, my Shayako. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Kusibaki mtu nyuma Nafikiri ni mekuungelesha At a personal level I've talked to you at a personal level Mtu yote ya sibaki kubatisha maisha uko nyuma Let nobody remain behind Kubatisha maisha Start the journey today The journey that shapes your life The point of decision Is the point where you start to see God Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Father. Bwana Yesu sifiwe. Pata mbao si jawambia ni kwamba mimi ni kisikia sauti ya Bwana ni lisikia ni kiyo kwa ba. Mungu wakiniambia wakati wako umefika uwanze safari yako ya maisha. So ukiwa kanisani usiaibike. Hallelujah. Don't feel ashamed. Me, I was consuming alcohol when I heard the voice of God. I think we are very few people. I think it's me and young Kicho who heard God when we were drunk. Hallelujah. So wawo usiaibike uko kanisani. Inuwa Kicho chako kwa ujasiri na kwa moyo wako kili unafaa kwa unasema shetani umenitesa siku nyingi leo na kugeuzia mgongo. Shetani umenitesa siku nyingi Nimeishi kama sina baba. Leo nafanyika mwana. Today I'm being made a child. I've lived godless for too many years. And the devil has tormented me. So be in your heart. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What is wrong with my son there? Huh? What is wrong? Eh? Okay, so let us just pray. Shitana Nakupoteza, he's too late. He's losing you now. He's too late. Can we pray? 
naombea kwa Kiswahili na Kizungu. Kama lugha unapenda ni Kiswahili, omba na mimi kwa Kiswahili nikiombea Kizungu we nyamaza tu. Okay? Now I'm praying in two languages, English and Kiswahili. If your preferred language, if your preferred language is uh, so if your preferred language is Kiswahili, pray with me in Kiswahili. If yours is English, wait for me to finish Kiswahili and then we pray in English. Hallelujah. So utainamisha tu kichwa mikono yako ikuwe wazi, u feel free katika moyo wako. Alafu omba na mimi kutoka kwa moyo wako. Sema Bwana Yesu. Mimi ni mwenye dhambi. Nioshe na damu yako takatifu unifanye mwana wako. Ulikufa kwa sababu yangu na sasa unaishi kwa sababu yangu nakupa maisha yangu na nakupa roho yangu futa jina langu kutoka kwa kitabu cha mauti andika jina langu kwa kitabu cha uzima wa milele kutoka sasa mimi ni wako na nakiri kwa kinywa changu ya kwamba nimeokoka Kristo ameniokoa na yeye ndiye mwokozi wangu kutoka dakika hii katika jina la Yesu Kristo amen thank you jesus haleluya kizungu wale ambao ni wa kizungu those who are watching those who are following and english is your language pray with me lord jesus i am a sinner wash me with your precious blood and make me your child you died for me and you resurrected for me and you are alive for me i give you my heart and i give you my life erase my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life from this moment i confess that which i believe i am born again i am saved Jesus is my Lord and he is my savior. In Jesus Christ name. Amen. 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 Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tumesikia message ya Pastor Bramwell na mimi nikakuja nikaongezea kadogo tu maombi. Jaribu kuomba kila siku. Of course, hautaomba masaa mawili siku ya kwanza. Lakini ile kidogo utaomba mbingu itapokea na kesho utaomba zaidi. Biblia ndio pana siri za Mungu. In the Bible that is where the, the secrets of God. Jaribu kuisoma kila siku na kama ujui kusoma eka katoto kakusome. Na tunazianga kitabu inaitwa Matthew. Amen. Hallelujah. Na kisha kama umetoka mbali tafuta kanisa ya kiroho ingia ndani. Kanisa inaweza kuwa haina miujiza lakini wanafundisha neno ya Mungu ambayo itakusaidia kukua ingia ndani. Na pia Heaven's TV ambayo najua wengi wenyu mliona iko. Tuko na Heaven's TV kwa Kenya nzima. Unaweza fuatilia mchana na usiku na uta utatiwa moyo katika jina takatifu jina lake Yesu Kristo. La mwisho na wapatia prayer mat. Hii utapiga magoti na unaomba ama ukikaa kwa kitu ukiomba unaweza kanyanga na ukimaliza unaweza yeye kata chini ya pilo maana nimeziombea na unaona pale zinatoka zinatoka zinaishingi hapo kwa madhabahu hapo tunaikanga vitu taka, anointing oil iko hapo vitu takatifu zinakuwa hapo so nakupatia hii amen lakini nakupatia baada ya nachukua namba yako muhimu hiyo namba yako tuko na simu ambayo itakutumia message wakati nimechukua namba yako kuna namba utatumiwa nayo message na hiyo namba iko na watu wameokoka kwa ikanisa so watu wote wameokoka kwa ikanisa wako ndio wanaandikangwa watu wameokoka hapa peke yake so ukiandika message kwa hiyo ukitaji msaada wa kanisa ama mwelekeo tutajua kwamba huyu ni mtoto aliokokea hapa na utaweza kusaidika si ndio so wanakuandika tu jina na wakimaliza kuandika jina unakujia mkeka wako leo nimeamua kuongea na Kiswahili tupu kama wahenga <laughs>